Crisis management is key, meaning critical, to supersizing your business. Sharon Horn Nelson here, and today we're talking about crisis management and the importance of it. And my question for you, first and foremost, is do you have a crisis response plan? We call them contingency plans, where I come from, but everybody calls things different things. But it's the same thing. And I will share a four-part crisis response plan. If you don't have one, I highly recommend that you put one in place as soon as possible. Why? Think of COVID. Think of weather or natural disasters that could impact your business. Even if you're just uh, running an online business or an internet business, guess what? What happens if there's a disaster and the technology, the electricity goes out or the site that you depend on goes down for an extended period of time or even a short period of time? Sometimes just a little glip in the system can be devastating if you don't have a plan in place for what you're going to do when it goes down. Uh, I think one of the things that COVID taught us, if not any other lessons learned, is that we have to have a contingency plan for things that we don't anticipate. And I never thought of a global pandemic. I guess it should have been on my radar somewhere, but I really never thought of it before it happened. But I also knew that it's important and we had contingency plans in place. Whenever something happens that's outside of our control, we have to have an ability and a framework to respond. <clears throat> Number one, it, it can be the difference between our business succeeding and failing. It can be the difference between a uh, devastating crisis versus one that we turn into an opportunity. Kind of like everything else, right? So it's an example of proactive risk management, right? We have a contingency plan for everything. In corporate America, we had contingency plans for, depending on where the plants were located, uh, the weather that's appropriate for the area. Some areas have hurricanes, some areas have tornadoes, some areas have both, some have blizzards, some have uh, monsoons. So we had to make plans and have those built into our response plan in case they happened. We had really bad flooding at a bakery I worked at once and we couldn't get supplies in and out or trucks in and out to deliver. And so we had a contingency plan for that. We had to reroute the way we shipped out of that facility. So what are the four parts that we want to include in our crisis response plan in case you don't have one? Number one, clear chain of command. We have to know who's in charge, who's responsible for what, when something goes down. So if there's a bomb threat at your business, you know who's in charge and who to listen to and they direct everything and have the communication. Why? It gives us faster decision making and it makes sure that we have someone with a cool head managing the crisis for us. Second component of a good crisis response plan is effective communication channels set up in advance and tested in advance. I think of the school calling change for snow days. I live in Wisconsin, so there's lots of snow days some years, not this year, but last year there were a ton of them. And there's an automated system now that calls all the parents when there's a snow day to make sure you don't send your kids to school. And that's a really good thing because one time I took my son to school and there was no school. I dropped him off and I'm like, wow, it was awful quiet at school today. Drove around the block and picked him up because the doors were locked. Uh, so we want to have a communication system and, and channels in place to notify anybody that needs to be notified. Third thing we need to do is allocate resources. We want to have, um, and that would include, of course, personnel, finances, technology, depending on the <clears throat> situation will determine what we need to do and what resources are required to handle that situation. Uh, a lot of times it's as many hands as can get there on deck. I think of blizzard situations. So I worked at a newspaper and, you know, when there was a blizzard, it was pretty hard to get the newspaper out, but it ended up being all hands on deck, pitching in and helping out wherever we could because we'd be short staffed in almost every department. Uh, and then the fourth component of our crisis response plan is a scenario-based training. We want to make sure we are coming up with at least a couple times a year. We always did it quarterly, but at least once a year at the bare minimum. But um, if you can do it more than that, more than that. And we would, we would uh, now you can get computers to generate scenarios for you. Okay, this happened. Uh, and then how, and then test it through your crisis response uh, plan and see how it goes. And then capture the things that went well and improve or automate them. And then uh, learn, learn the lessons you need to learn for the things that didn't go right when you uh, did a test run and scenario of a, of a crisis, right? 
And uh, depending on where you're located, you, you will run into more real crises than other. You know, it's always, we hope that we never need to use our plan, but we wanna be prepared in case we do. Uh, so I would love to know, do you have a, uh, contingency plans, I call them, or a crisis response plan for your organization? And if so, have you tested it? Have you run through it to make sure that it works, at least on a hypothetical crisis? That's it. That's all I've got today. Any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow with another uh, strategy or tip or trick that we need to use to supersize and grow our business. Have an awesome day.